internet, it's Monica, and today I am so excited for this video because I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to do sort of a retrospective of my reading of last year, and I noticed that there was very much so a theme in my reading last year, at least the way that I talked about my reading, and a theme in my goals for my reading in 2019, um, and that is a focus on reading stories by Asian authors and or featuring Asian characters. However, in doing kind of a retrospective on my reading last year, what I noticed is that even though that was a focus for me that I talked about a lot, I, you know, I think I did read more books than I usually do featuring Asian characters, I really think I could have done better. And that's something that I'm trying to focus on and do better in 2019. It is a huge goal for me. I kind of went through and made my annual goals for this year, and they are basically to read 75 books by the end of the year, have 25 of them be comics or manga, and have 25 of them be... Uh, books by Asian authors and or featuring Asian characters. I've decided not to overlap the manga challenge with that one just because it could very easily be all manga. Uh, and I love manga, but I kind of want to keep them separate. So those are my overall go goals. My hope is that this time next year I will redo this video and we'll see how I did this year. But in this video I wanted to look back at 2018, my reading in 2018, and talk about some of the books that I did read that featured Asian characters and just talk about my feelings about them, share some of my favorites, and one of them is my favorite book that I read in the entirety of last year, so I thought it'd be good to just talk about that here. But before I dive into talking about the books, I wanted to give a big shout out to this video's sponsor, Disney Books. They are sponsoring this video in celebration of one of my most anticipated books of the year, and I honestly feel really honored to be working on this video. Um, and it is for Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee. I talked about this in my most anticipated books of 2019 video. Um, but this is a Korean inspired, uh, Korean folklore inspired sci-fi novel. It is under the Rick Riordan Presents imprint, so it's a middle grade story. And I'm so excited for this. Like literally when I was actually in middle grade, like I can't think of one book like this that I could have read. And so the fact that this is a thing, the fact that this is like something that, you know, a young Korean kid will have access to is like so amazing to me. And I kind of think about it and I start tearing up because that's something that like, man, if I had had that growing up, that would have been everything. That would have been my favorite book. They were kind enough to send me this box, which I'm very excited to open for you all. I've cut it already so you don't have to watch me struggle with that on camera because I always struggle. Put it up and at the top, there is, ooh, <laughs> this is so exciting. Um, okay, so at the top there is this bag of Korean treats, basically. And there's a card. It says, replenish your G with these delicious snacks. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so it, like, has a little explainer of, like, why they included the item. And then it explains what G is, the life force that flows through all living things. That's super cool. But I'm very excited for those snacks. Thank you. We have this really cute gold journal, and it says here, a journal for wishing to pretend you have the powers of a Dokkaebi. Goblins and Dokkaebi are goblins that have the power to conjure objects from thin air. That's really cool! It's actually, like, so thoughtful. <laughs> like, they actually put thought into, like, the culture, like, Korean culture and folklore and, like, what's, I'm assuming, in this book. I'm just excited about it. Ooh! Okay, we have this cute fox scarf, I assume. It says, something stylish for you because a gumiho isn't the only one who can change their look. Fox spirits that can shapeshift. Okay, I'm into that. Um, then, of course, we have the book, which I'll get to in a second. But down at the bottom, there is this. It's like a raincoat. That's really cute. Cool. It's so light. Is this? Ooh, it's unique glow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so this says, protect yourself from rain and wind, elements linked to the dragon in Korean folklore. Korean dragons are legendary creatures related to elements of water and air. So nice. A nice lightweight rain jacket to protect me from the elements. I definitely need protecting from the elements. And then here at the bottom, they have these cards, which have little facts about 
Korean um, Korean fantasy or Korean folklore. So it says, did you know in Korean folklore, ghosts are known to bring bad luck wherever they go. The tiger, specifically the white tiger, plays an important part in Korean mythology and culture. And shamans act as the bridge between the human world and restless spirits. Again, <laughs> this is just really thoughtful in that they, it really means something to me, like, to see that they took that time to, like, think about the culture and the story and put together a box like this, like that. That's really cool. So Dragon Pearl was just recently released and a quick synopsis, it follows Min, who is 13 years old and she comes from a long line of fox spirits. However, her family hides the fact that they are fox spirits and they live their lives as humans. And Min is like at home counting down the days to when she can go out and join her brother as part of the space forces. However, when word reaches Min and her family that her brother has abandoned his post as part of the space force in order to search for this mysterious object called the Dragon Pearl, she goes off on a hunt to try and find him um, and it just sounds so cool like fantasy like Korean folklore in space I'm so excited for this and so excited that, that a book like this exists so I will have more information and info in the description box below in case you want to check it out but thank you again to Disney books for sponsoring this video I'm over the moon excited and that is definitely on my TBR of like Asian books I want to read this year if you're interested, let me know. I was debating doing a video all about the books that are sort of on my TBR for this year um, in that category. So let me know and I can potentially make that video a thing. But now on to the books that I read in 2018 that I love. I'm going to save my favorite for last. But first we have Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. And this is by Grace Lynn. And it is a middle grade fantasy. Uh, and it follows young Min Lee who lives in the Valley of Fruitless Mountain. And basically her, her, her and her family um, are really struggling when it comes to food and finan finances. Um, and so she goes to try and find the man the old man of the moon to like ask him for help um and the old man of the moon is like this myth mythology mythological man that her parents tell her stories about and so she sort of runs away to try and find him um and it's about her adventures getting there and it's just like a really beautiful middle grade story it very much so gave me like alice in wonderland vibes uh i just loved the writing i loved the mythology of it. It takes a lot from Chinese folklore and weaves it into this really beautiful lush story that I just, it feels classic when you read it to be honest. So if you're looking for something that's just lovely and beautifully written, I highly recommend this one. And of course I can't make this list without talking about Maureen Gu's 2018 release, The Way You Make Me Feel. This story follows Clara Shin and she is sort of seen as like a troublemaker. Her and her friends are all sort of seen like troublemakers and she ends up getting into trouble by pulling a prank and her father as a form of punishment makes her work the summer with her biggest enemy um, in his uh, food truck which serves Korean Brazilian food and that's one of the things that I love about this book is that it they're Korean Americans but they're also Korean Brazilian the father is Korean but he was born and raised in Brazil and immigrated to the US um, and I loved that because I think, you know, that's not really something we see a lot in fiction is the fact that Koreans, Asians, people of color in general, they come from all over. Uh, you know, Koreans don't just come from Korea. And I loved that. I loved that mix and melding of cultures. I thought that was really powerful and beautiful about this story. I loved the focus of friendship in this book. Like, yes, there is a romantic element to it. But for me, what really, what I really loved about this was the story about, uh, what I really loved about this was the focus on, you know, outgrowing certain friends and, and finding other friends and the power of um, allowing yourself to be a bit vulnerable. Um, <laughs> randomly, the mom is a like influencer, which was just kind of funny to read. And I just, I loved it so much. It was so fun. If you haven't read Maureen Goo books, I highly recommend that. And then sort of on the opposite side of the scale is American Panda by Gloria Chow. This story follows Mei Lu, who is starting her first year at university. And it's about her dealing with the burden sort of dealing with Asian guilt and dealing with the burden, the burden of expectations that are often put on children of immigrants and, and children of Asian immigrants. She comes from a very, very traditional household that expects, you know, 
their child to go and be a doctor, to fulfill certain roles, and and doing anything outside of what they view as the right thing to do basically means you're cut off completely, that you are um, ungrateful and not their daughter anymore. And this is May Lynn's story of, of you know, she is going to you know, undergrad to eventually be a doctor. And she hates germs. She doesn't want to be a doctor. That's not what she loves. She loves art, uh, being a dancer. And that's what she wants to do. And this story explores that sort of, you know, how, how you struggle with that kind of burden. And what I love about this is that it's not an easy story. You know, I think so often when you see like, for some reason, the only thing that's coming to mind is High School Musical. You know, I think so often you see stories like this where a child, you know, knows that there's something else that they want to focus on and so they try to explain that to their parents and but eventually I feel like the parents get it and they're like they just want their child to be happy and you know that's how the story ends and this story is a lot more complicated than that because her parents like they don't care that that's not what makes her happy and it's not because they're evil it's because they like they they want the best for her and there's a lot of cultural stuff in that at the same time like you know I think that it gets to a point where it is abusive um, and I, I think it's important to talk about these stories because I think it's really important that people who are living this, who, who whose lives these are, um, are able to see this and are able to see that there is an out, that there is another option. And I love this book because the stakes are real, it's complicated, all the family members are complicated. But yeah, I just really enjoyed the story and I'm so excited to see what Gloria Chow has coming out next. Then uh, is a book that I have not been able to stop thinking about since I first read it, uh, and that is Written in the Stars by Aisha Saeed. This story follows not Nyla, um, and Nyla is in love, but she's not supposed to fall in love because her parents want her to marry via an arranged marriage. They find out she's in love with another boy, and they pack up everything, and they take her to Pakistan, and this is um, the story of them trying to force her into an arranged marriage. This story is harrowing, uh, like trigger warnings for sexual assault, um, assault in general, um, manipulation, all of that. Um, it is a difficult read. There were times when I was reading it where I was like physically shaking because I was so upset, um, but this story has stuck with me and it's absolutely beautifully written. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I also think that it's really important that the story is own voices, that it's written by someone who um, is from this culture and also who has gone through an arranged marriage themselves. There's, um, Aisha Saeed talks about it in her author's note that, you know, they chose, for, the, you know, they chose the tradition of arranged marriage, um, that she and her husband, they chose the tradition of an arranged marriage and that's something that, you know, they really valued and they're happy with. Um, but this is also a reality for many girls and I really loved that. I think that it's really important, again, that this was own voices because I think so often in Western media, arranged marriages as a whole are just sort of like seen as like bad and painted as wholly bad. And I think that it's important that you know, this story was really told with the nuance of someone who like, it, who understands this culture innately. I absolutely love it. I don't hear enough about this story. I feel like no one ever talks about it. So I just wanted to talk about it here because I think it's brilliant and I highly recommend it. The last book I want to talk about is my, my number one book of 2018 and that is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This book was on my TBR for so long. Uh, ever since it came out, it's been on my TBR. I feel like every once in a while, one of you would always be like, have you read Pachinko yet? And I'd have to be like, not yet. <laughs> because it's it's long, okay? It's an endeavor, uh, but it is worth it. And I'm so happy that I finally picked it up this year because it's brilliant. Um, this story follows a family starting with um, Senja. In, in the early 1900s, Sanja is a teen girl living in the countryside of Korea. So the story starts with her in Korea and it follows her as she moves from Korea to Japan um, during the colonization of Korea by Japan. Um, and it follows her and her family sort of just journey through this time period. And it's so beautifully written. Um, and I think I, like, I just learned so much reading this book about Korea and Japan about those relations. It was wild to me when I got to the point of time when my mother would have been born because for me that was like 
really jarring because you know I always knew that my mom grew up in a very different Korea than the one that you see today. Sorry if things moved, camera battery died. As I was saying, it was a really jarring moment for me when I got to the point where my mother would have been born because you know I always knew that my mom's childhood was a very rough one and I always knew that she grew up in a very different Korea than the one that exists today but I didn't fully understand. I didn't fully grasp it until I got to like the late 1940s and I was like, oh, <laughs> like my mom grew up in this. And it, you know, for me, it just made me like, like, wow, I'm in awe of this lady who like lived through that and came here and like gave me this better life and whew, it's a lot. <laughs> um, and so that was like really powerful for me when reading this book. Like I had such a deep connection to it. Um, I think this story shows the effect, the like, the, the beginnings of the long-term effect of um, trauma. Um, the trauma of like an entire country. And it made me think a lot about like just Korea, Koreans in general. You know, I feel like there are so many Koreans who were, who have been sort of displaced from their country because of something that happened like 60 some years ago and you're still feeling the repercussions of that today and this story you know it just it it shows a, a point of time and a place that i don't think like i never learned about any of this in my education uh growing up here and i think that's a travesty i think there's so much in the world that we don't learn about in school that is just ridiculous like instead of having us memorize every president and like all of this stuff that you know doesn't matter i would love to have just have had more world knowledge um but i'm thankful for books like this that you know open you up to things that you had never thought about before and, and events that you had never you know been privy to which is like this book was honestly the what sparked the whole like purpose for me of like wanting to say like no this year I'm really gonna focus on reading um Asian books because like my knowledge is limited and I don't want it to be and I want that to be like a really big focus for me and something that I can you know eventually see myself as an expert on um and so this is sort of like step one of that but I adored this book so so much I like even just if you don't have that personal connection with the story I think it's absolutely beautifully written if you like a good sprawling saga of a book I think you'll really like this it's also being adapted so I highly recommend picking it up before that happens um, I think it's supposed to come out this year but we'll see um, but yeah these are the top probably top five books I read last year uh, that are under sort of that Asian umbrella and I loved all of them I read a few others but these were the ones that really stuck out to me that I just think about a lot to this day um, so I wanted to share them with you guys in this video and I'd love to hear from you all if you have recommendations of books that you think I should include something that I'm trying to really focus on this year is also reading more books in translation so if you have any recommendations for that feel free to let me know and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to y'all next time Bye!